Life is full of ups and downs. Life is full of ins and outs. But don't give up and don't feel down. Just learn to fly and you'll get by. But don't give up and don't A balloon down. carrying Mr. Phileas Fogg and his butler, Passepartout, has landed in a park. The travellers have stayed with the students and their teacher, Professor Tongue Twister, has set off on a journey through space, time and literature. What is he going to do now? I'm sorry I'm late, sweetheart. I just had to finish my latest experiment. That's all right, Henry. I'm just so happy we finally have the chance to be alone. Yes. Yes, it's not often we're alone. Just the three, er, uh, two of us. Is it, sweetheart? That's exactly what I mean. Henry, would I be mistaken in thinking that for a long time now you've wanted to tell me something? Does she suspect something? Henry, is there something you're trying to hide? Hide? Oh, to hide? No, of course not. May I propose that... Propose? Don't be shy. If you want to propose, it's an excellent moment. No, no, no. I just wanted to suggest that we go inside. It's rather cold, and I'm not sure you would really... Except, of course I would. I greatly admire your scientific mind, and it really doesn't bother me that my father says all your research is such nonsense. Nonsense? How can Reverend Lee say such a thing? We'll have to take care of him. Care? Oh, Henry, you're so caring. I have great admiration for your noble nature. But in every man there are two natures. One of good... One of evil. Sometimes it's hard to keep the balance. Oh, you are rather good at keeping this balance. I mean, you haven't taken a single step forward while courting me for the last three years. Oh, Alice, if only I could tell you why. It's these experiments. I've been so busy. Busy? That's what they all say. Henry, is there somebody else? Somebody else? No, no. She clearly senses something. We'll have to take care of her, too. Henry, what are you mumbling about there? You know, I have a strange feeling that you don't care about me at all. Oh, Alice, I, I've not been feeling quite myself lately. All these emotions and... Emotions? Oh, Henry, I'm sure you're only so nervous because this is your first time. I mean, you haven't proposed before, have you? No. But Alice, this wouldn't be a good time. It would be a big change. My goodness. I can feel a change is approaching. You mean a change in your marital status? No, no. I must go and change. But... Um, I guess I'm not properly dressed for dinner. I must go to my room at once. Henry, would you like me to go with you? No, no. Stay here. Whatever you do, don't follow me. Oh, it's been so so long since I was able to get some rest. A good night's sleep on solid ground. That's what I need. I could land in that garden down there and make my bed on a bench. I don't understand why he feels it necessary to change again. He's only just changed for our five o'clock tea. What's taking him so long? Henry, are you in there? Henry, what's the matter? No, father, help! I'm coming, my daughter, I'm coming. God help me. No. No. <laughs> That's one out of the way. One down and one to go. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, nice garden. Ooh, roses are oh, my favorites. Oh, Father, what's he done to you? What on earth is going on? Who are you? Police! What's all this, then? Arrest him! He's just assaulted my father! It's not possible. I've only just landed. 
We'll have to see about that. What's happened? Uh, is anything the matter? Oh, Henry. This horrible man did a terrible thing to my father. How awful. It's not true. Please, don't touch anything. Doctor, have you seen this man before? Well, yes, Inspector. Yes, his, his face looks rather familiar to me. Don't be ridiculous. I've never been here before. I'm a perfect stranger. Don't believe him, Inspector. I'm sure I saw him around here yesterday at 7 o'clock. And the day before. And the day before that. He must have been planning it for ages. It's all lies. We'll check that. Don't worry, sir. I'll interrogate him. Come on, Alice. Look, Inspector, I can... Sit down. Murder. So tell me, what were you doing yesterday at 7 o'clock? Yesterday, at 7 o'clock, I was talking to William Shakespeare. In fact, I was helping him to write a play. Mr. Shakespeare. I've heard that name before. I'll check his record. And the day before yesterday, what were you doing the day before yesterday at 7 o'clock? Day before yesterday. The day before yesterday, at 7 o'clock, I was in Canterbury. Canterbury. And what were you doing in Canterbury? I... Don't tell me you were visiting the cathedral. No, actually, I was chatting to Jeff, Geoffrey Chaucer. And I can prove it. There were loads of witnesses. There was the Duke, the Bishop, the Guard, not to mention all of the contestants. And the day before that? You mean three days ago? Exactly. At seven o'clock? Didn't I say seven? The day before, the day before yesterday, at seven o'clock, I was having dinner with Robinson Crusoe. I'm sure he'd be very happy to confirm it. Mr. Crusoe. Address? Uh, number one, Desert Island. What? Are you trying to be funny? No. You are under arrest. On what charge? You are charged with committing murder, giving false testimony, resisting arrest, and obstructing the course of justice. Isn't that enough for you? I'm not giving false testimony. It's that man. He's the two-faced liar. That man? That man is Dr. Henry Jekyll, a highly respected gentleman and a famous physician. You are also charged with slander. Jekyll. Did you say Dr. Jekyll? <laughs> For goodness sake, don't you know the book? What book? The one about the doctor who invented a liquid which could turn him into a monster called Hyde. He's probably turning into Hyde as we speak. Help! Oh, no! Too late! Uncuff me! Quick! Help! <laughs> the game is up! You're under arrest! Ha! You want to put me in prison? Never. I've murdered before, and I'll murder again. Now, Mr. Hyde will do away with Dr. Jekyll. My God! He's changing! Don't look, my dear. Don't look. It's all over. It's all over. I'm so grateful for all you've done. Don't mention it. You're so modest. I have great admiration for your no... I like you too, Alice. You do? So why do you want to stay? Well... It's not that I don't want to. I'd love to, but sorry, I've got to go. 
But why? Um, well, it's, it's, it, it's the balloon. Um, you see, it's, it's, it's not mine. I borrowed it from this gentleman and uh, I promised to return it, um, today, uh, by 12 o'clock and, uh, ooh, it's getting late. Bye. <sighs> if I hadn't read the book about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I wouldn't have known what was going on there. And if I hadn't known what was going on, I wouldn't have been able to help Miss Alice. And if I hadn't helped Miss Alice, then the monster would have got her and... Oh, it's too awful to think about. Maybe it'll be easier for me to express myself in a poem. It's time for a rhyme. A young doctor named Jekyll once tried to pretend he was nice. But inside, he was nasty and strange, and he often would change to reveal a real monster called Hyde. He was leading a life that was double, which resulted in pain and much trouble. And his girlfriend, Miss Alice, unaware of his malice, saw her happiness soon burst like a bubble. There's a moral for girls in this fable. Tell him no if your love is unstable. And before you say yes, which may cause a great mess, make him put all his cards on the table. Having borrowed a balloon from Phileas Fogg, Professor Tongue Twister flew into the world of literature. He soon met Robin Hood, Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson. He also visited Romeo and Juliet and called on Henry Higgins, the famous linguist. He helped the citizens of Croydon to win the War of the Worlds and also made the acquaintance of Robinson Crusoe, the famous castaway. He made friends with Geoffrey Chaucer and William Shakespeare. He came between Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Where will he end up next? Life is full of ups and downs. Life is full of ins and outs. But don't give up and don't feel down. Just learn to fly.